Hey guys, just before we start this next video, um, I had an equipment failure, so I've had to go and put this in at the end, but uh, my camera wasn't working for the whole video, the sound and the video should be good, but you're gonna miss out on this beautiful face and you get to stare at Frank and Monica. So good luck to you. I bet you enjoy this one better than the others. See ya. Okay, hey guys, welcome back to um, let's be frank. <laughs> <laughs> let's be frank. Let's be frank. And that's because I'm talking to Frank and Monica about simplifying the whole process for people who are looking to move to live in or do business in Bali. And there's a massive to a number of topics we're going to be covering uh, continuously. We're going to try and keep these ha happening as often as we can every week. Um, and look, we've had a massive uh, number of calls back and emails and inquiries back both to me and director Frank and Monica. Um, so I'll tell you what, if you're interested in talking to them, I'm gonna put a, an email address down here for you to get in touch with them directly. Um, I have no direct involvement with the business other than they're good friends and they've been helping me for the last two years to do all my legal, my, my immigration and, and financial sort of assistance, which has just been invaluable to me. Knowing someone that speaks English, uh, in fact, speaks Australian, doesn't mind a beer, and <laughs> and puts up with my swearing, and that's just Monica. <laughs> and, um, and, and also on the other side, I can say my mother listens when he tells me he's doing something wrong, and I yell at him, "Don't you listen to these YouTube?" He goes, "Oh shit, I'm going back and have a look at it." So the best thing about about using a service like Frank and Monica's is is Monica's local. She speaks the language perfectly. Her interpretation of the language is different from what we would learn as Westerners who are translating or Google Translate or something like that. So she's perfectly liaison between the, between the customer and the immigration or the legal departments and the lawyers and all that sort of stuff. And I, I can't tell you how many times there have been little tiny nuances in the conversations that have made a massive, massive difference in the in the order of tens of thousands of dollars or more um, so thanks guys for helping me and looking after us mm -hmm. and um, and that's obviously why I came to you and said can you help us because there's a million people out there as you know that are keen to find out what to do and how to is it possible to move to Australia is it possible to live in uh, so to Bali is it possible to live in Bali can you do business and we'll keep going through that but today yeah. we're talking about spouse kit test spouse kit test yes so, yes uh, I uh, many people comment or oh, can you do this about the spouse kitas and others then now uh, today is about the spouse kitas which is your spouse is either husband or wife is Indonesian mm -hmm. so as you already going through that and then Frank is well going through that and we can apply at the moment spouse kitas from offshore right. yes like what you uh, got done before or or uh, prior to the uh, old regulation is you can convert while you are under B21 and convert into spouse right. which is at the moment they try to get uh, get rid of it so you cannot have two active visa right. at the same time so either you have to go out and apply while you are offshore you know one week seven to ten days and then we apply for your new type of visa which is this is a spouse visa right. so that's and um, other way yeah and for the um, um, for the requirements, we will give you also the um, shopping list. Um, basically, all is from your uh, spouse side, which is the original of the ID card, either husband or wife, which is the Indonesian, and the family card of them, your marriage certificate, which is the civil register, and also CNI letter or in. Um, Australian uh, embassy is impen mm. impediment? Yeah, impediment to marriage. Impediment letter yeah. to marry, correct. And then domicile letter where you are staying in and birth certificate of the spouse. And, and I'd say to you that there is quite a few documents that have to be gained by the Indonesian. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take some time because they're normally in Bali. They're, yeah. uh, they're for Bantu, sorry, their uh, uh, Kampung was back uh, somewhere else yeah. and that and might take time. Bali, so get yes. ready that you're going to go back to the Kampung and have to get originals of things. Original, so time is going to be the killer there, yeah. all right? Yeah, so um, let me just, um, well, I got married in Bali which made life a lot easier yep. Yep. for the Kitas because all of my documentation was localised. If, as I understand it, if you marry a Indonesian in Australia, the Indonesian authorities don't um, recognise the marriage certificate, is correct. that correct? Yes, so, correct. So you've got to come back here physically. Yeah, or yeah. before that, you have to register your marriage certificate into Indonesian embassy yeah. in your country. 
Right. You can yes. register it over okay. in so Australia. So you can go through that process. Correct. Yeah. Offshore. Yes. God knows how long that'll take. Yeah. <laughs> and then, they, and then, then when you get back here, it's on the uh, civil register. Then report here. it into okay. civil register. So it's it's that that part. Just getting married in in Indonesia, we had to go through a whole heap of paperwork. Luckily, we had a marriage service who did all that for us. Oh, which that's was correct. Really good. Yes. There's yeah. some excellent ones. Um, yes. We had to be the same religion. Um, so yes. you can't have. Uh, you can't marry a Hindu if you're a Christian. You actually have to be both the same, well, yes, the same denomination or, or, or religion. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and to answer that, that's why some people might even fly to Singapore. You can fly to Singapore and Hong Kong and uh, Nature Australia and get married there and then return and have the marriage uh, registered here right. as well. Yeah, okay. So, so if you are looking to get married to an Indonesian, there's a bit of there's a bit of work to be done. And could you help people with that? Yep. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, and already yeah. married ones, you know, that's yeah, the, yeah. that's the thing. Married when, uh, and even the ones that we've had recently, whereby that they've actually given up their um, Indonesian citizenship and they become a, a UK or a British they've person. They've moved to Australia, 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 Australia. Yes. and then they get back here and they. Yeah, that's back. a different visa, isn't it? There's yes, a, yes, different. And what's that one called? That's a repatriation visa. Repatriation visa. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll go through that in a sec because that's yes. probably a little bit. More, is it? Look, it's, a, it's the same thing, it's available, it's time. Because yes. the documents that are required are just not simple because most of them have to go back, as I said, to Kampong or other parts of um, where Indonesia they where they live to yes. get it. Yeah. It's not get the forms here. Mm -hmm. So it's, look, don't walk in the door and say, oh, Frank, you're coming next week, is that okay? Yeah, not yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. No. Uh, if you're getting married in Bali to an Australian, or uh, Australian, Australian, or, or same country, that can still be registered with the Australian Embassy or, and, and deal with that's all fully legal if you get married yeah, over yeah. here on your, on yeah, your honeymoon. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And really the only thing there is that if you've got assets, if you've got assets and um, uh, homes and other things in Australia, that's the only time you have to register it over there. Um, in, in my case, I have no assets in Australia anymore. Yeah. Monica owns a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something. Well, I'll meet you too, I'm here. So, and Monica proved by going to the Australian yeah, Embassy, because yeah. she didn't believe me, and, and it's not required to now be that's, a, that's an interesting thing, because I'm looking at the same thing now, I'm married to Fee. My will in, in Australia, it doesn't count over here. No, you have to need a will. So here. I need, need to do a will over here just yeah. to make sure anything I want to send Covers. back to my children yeah. or, yes. or whatever yes. I can I can distribute. That's right. The way yeah. I want it, so. And you have a then you can have as you have in Australia, you can have an executor of the will mm -hmm. that could be a, a notary here or a third party. The the uh, will is held by those people and they just present it to the notaries and the uh, the heirs then get what is required. For That's them. a pretty straightforward process. Yeah, yes. same yeah. as same yeah. as in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so we've got our list of st stuff to do. We're warned that it could take a while. It's different if they come from Bali. They still live in the same in the same areas they were born, and they can get access to all the. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, um, but in so my case, Fee was from Sumatra, mm -hmm. living in Bali. She yeah. had to move all of her. KTP, the family yes. cars and stuff over here yeah. so that they could be dealt with locally. So then Monica was the opposite because... Yeah, born I still settled. keep mine in uh, Sumatra. I, bo I was born in Sulawesi, but yeah. all my yeah. uh, family car, family KTP is in Medan, Sumatra. Yeah. But I moved here, but I didn't change anything because the process is going to be a killing. Oh, that's a pain. It uh, is. <laughs> Fee, Fee had to go about three or four times, yeah. sit and wait in a queue all day. Correct. Only to be told, sorry, they went home for lunch and they're not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Hol> holiday. <laughs> Um, so, so that's a process. So, so I understand that there's, and there's not much money involved in that. It's just time. No, no. Um, Correct. And, and, and being prepared. So. Again, it's the personal presentation is the killer. Yeah. You can't send uh, a letter and ask to do it. Yeah. It's actually got to be a family member or the person themselves. Yeah. Yes. Or jump right. on a plane, go over there, do yes. it. Yes, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Document, so. All right. So, you've um, got so I'll put that shopping list down for you guys. Uh, and again, Frank's number because that's the, the best way of them being able to help you with it personally um, and just making sure I'll look at the documents and go yeah that's not quite gonna cut the mustard or use that's fine yeah and I think the other one just for, uh, mentioning as we go through uh, again our dealing with friends in Facebook and elsewhere are, are mentioning about a bridging finance a bridging sorry visa, visa, bridging visa. finance I hope <laughs> uh, bridging uh, visa uh, can I tell you right as we're sitting here today it hasn't been signed off by government um, please give give uh, the government time to get it signed off uh, it's out there, people are thinking they're going to have it. No. Yeah. It'll be great when it's there, but right at this moment it isn't. So I don't know anything about a bridging visa. What is it? What we're doing is... So, uh, ex uh, <laughs> basically, it's same like the previous one, which you have the first visa here active, 
and you want to convert into that one, but right. you can do it without leaving the country. Right, right. So you are on show. But at the moment, they said you cannot have the same active visa. So while you finish all expired your first visa, you can buy 60 days visa. So this is the bridging one. Oh, so yeah, and then okay. you can apply for the new visa. Saves you going offshore. Yeah. Correct. Right. What we're doing, we're bringing onshore again. Yeah. They're swapping it around. But the thing is, more payment. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <Involved>. <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you. Should we say that loud for Darren? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I spoke to a, to a couple yesterday um, and they had a horror story. They went on to a, to a government, uh, sorry, to what looked like a government website. Oh, okay, um, yes. It said the official Bali, and I'm going to, I think I'm going to uh, uh, interview them. It's, it said the official Bali uh, visa online. Mm -hmm. They paid 300, 298 US dollars each for a 30 day visa, got over here and for found VOA. out. Yeah, wow. it's a scam, scam yeah. but it looks 100% legitimate. You look, it's got the coat of arms or mm -hmm. the, the, the government symbol. Um, so I'm gonna put the real the real v, uh, uh, yeah. visa on arrival, yes. Molina, Molina, and also right. the Love Bali one for the for the um, tourist, tour, tax. tourist tax. Yes. It is confusing, sorry, and, and in Australia it'd be immigration.gov.au, pretty yes. simple, but, yes. uh, but it's like Love Bali, Dot that's yes, the, that's that's the tourist, tourist yeah. So yeah. And, it, and people think, well, is that a scam? Because the, the one that is a scam looks more, yeah. <laughs> more like an original one. Yes, more like Someone original. bought, and I, yeah, that should be shut down. That's, I, I think there's, th there'd be a really good case for people from the immigration department to go and have yes, a look at them because exactly. they're, not, they're not doing any favours. The, the guy actually got a real visa from it, mm. but he paid, they paid thousands or hundreds of dollars more than they had to. Right, right, yeah. um, and the other, the other thing that does happen, the immigration officer doesn't accept it and sends it back to buy another one. Could do, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah can do. So, yeah, be careful. It's, it's tough that there are people out there scamming, and that could be in any country in the world. There's yes. no, nothing saying they're here in Bali. And just one other thing, uh, everybody knows my magical words of due diligence. Um, wanted to let you know that, uh, again, today proved absolutely uh, mandatory that when you're doing it, if you don't use us, use an agent, use an independent to get due diligence done. Because we had a client who's looking at buying and a lease agreement looked wonderful apart from there are payment terms, payment terms in the code. And two of the payment terms are yet to be made. And the actual person in the tenant now wants to sell 25, uh, sorry, 30, 29. 29 years and really has only paid for 20. 20 years. So we wow. went back through our due diligence. We've gone now back to, and they said, oh, okay, we'll, we'll make the payment Monday. Yeah. So he's <laughs> selling something he doesn't even have. Absolutely. Yes. Right. And that owner could have said, no, I want, I want the property back. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And it's $43,000 yeah. today. Yeah. We would have just lost. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, it's time. I know sometimes Westerners, we get frustrated because we want to get it done today. I don't know where you get that idea from. <laughs> yeah, talking to you and others. Or, and, and the phone call in the morning and the email in the afternoon and the WhatsApp when I'm going to sleep. So please let somebody do due diligence, right. look through it, make sure, because even, uh, even real estate agents, part of their role isn't it's really to look correct, at it. They yeah. just hand it on as a postman. Yeah. And then you go back to them and say it's wrong. They don't really care. It's not part of them. They want to sell the property, which is fair enough. But please, I ask you, get it done. I don't care what it may be, whether it's a, a land, whether it's a villa, whether it's a house, spend the time, make sure that the person who's selling it to you has true ownership or has true rights to that to pass on. Just sign that piece of paper to say <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And I nearly caught, I got unstuck with it a little bit this week, mm -hmm. talking to someone who actually wasn't the person I need to be talking to, made big promises, and then suddenly, uh, I, I don't know if I can complete that. <laughs> <laughs> After the deposit be paid, so. Yeah, uh, and just like you say, take some time, don't do it yourself, honestly, I can't, I can't be more straightforward. There are simple things like visa on arrival, go straight through. If you just want to be 2 mm -hmm. and you just want to turn up once and, and do it nice and easy, yep. that can be done online I believe too. But anything, if anything changes and anything happens and you don't have a sponsor then it's going to get messy. Yes, correct. And, and then you may not have any of the documents you need over here by the time they, you need to be able to provide. You might have to fly home, get those documents, come back to extend that visa. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very easy principle. VOA, yes, buy on a roll. Anything else above that, yeah. hey, just ring an agent and get them. Just make sure that someone, a third party who lives here, who knows the, the whole system and knows the updates. Because as you say, they're, they're starting to announce this new bridging visa, but um, 
they're talking I've about. I've heard that it's already in, but then other people are saying it's not quite in. So, so every day it could change. It could be in by the time we finish this conversation. Yeah. But they, no, they're on holidays. Today. <laughs> okay, hey, it's another um, holiday, Marcel. Oh, maybe can I uh, 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 add on? Um, yes, at the moment, uh, our immigration, our government, try to make life sim- simple. I mean, like you can apply everything on uh, online and everything, but. It turns out our human resources is not ready yet, yeah, even the system sense. as well. So yes, you can apply by online, but please, you still need someone out there, even not visa agency or even local people that you need to sponsor you when you are doing a, uh, um, extension. Yeah. You can ask the local because local gonna speak local as well. Yeah. So it's helping you so you will not get a headache. Yeah. You are not confusing like, oh, what letter that I have to support? What kind of letter? What this one? What is all the local? Can take you, take the local person that you trust, go to the immigration office, wherever it covers your area you live with, and then they will take the process with them. A, a good example of that is that when you're doing a, um, a, a key test, there's a two two uh, letters that need to be done. One says that I'm not working, not and work. we get quite a lot of queries that, hey, it's my spouse. Of course mm. they're not working. Mm-hmm. Yes, but the government still needs a letter saying that you will not work. work. And right. if you haven't got that, uh, it doesn't describe it so well in the website. It just says make the application, and so there can be blockages. So um, I want I want to actually add that because a lot of people assume that once you're married and living in a country like in Australia or like in the USA or something else. Um, if you've if you've got been given a green card or if you've been given residency, in many cases you're le- legally allowed to work. Allowed to work, in, helping in your spouse. in Bali you, oh. or in Indonesia, you're not allowed to to work automatically because you're because you're here on a spouse visa. Yep. Yep. So in my case, as uh, I can help my partner, yes, if he runs a, sh- a, 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 a shop. Yep. I can help her behind the scenes. Do yep. I can't take a sort of front line job as far as I'm yes, uh, I'm aware. Right. Um, but I can assist her with what she's doing yep. as her partner. Um, but I'm not allowed to go and get a job. I can't work at a bar. Or I can't do anything where I would be getting paid by another person. Right. I would have to apply. And well, we that, 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 yeah. that, that company would sub- the, yeah, that the company, company will sponsor, sponsor your working permit. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, that's totally separate to, to the spouse visa. So, I, um, just to, to give people an idea, if that marrying a, an Indonesian doesn't automatically give you any rights to work over here at all, exactly. it gives you a permit to stay. The first one's for 12 months? Yes. And then you can, when, you, when can you go for the permanent residency? Two years. After two years. Correct. So yeah, each, each 12 months you have to reapply? Yes. For the, for the one off? Yes, one so time. after the third one you want to extend or renew, then you can convert it into KITA, right. which is the five years. And yeah. that differs from a, a KITAS that is three or four years, then into KITA. So you've got various yeah. cut-in person, cut-in times for KITAS across to KITA. So it's permanent the one, does that, that still doesn't give you a chance to work, does it? No. no. <laughs> the only way, literally, is to either get a work permit, yes. to get sponsored by a company over company here, over here. <clears throat> yes. and, they, and there's criteria that they would have to meet yep. to prove that there's no one locally that they could put in that role. Yes. Or if your spouse having a business, so the company or the business of your spouse uh, apply for the uh, RPTKA, we call it. Right. That's the working permit that you have to pay to the government, 1,200 US dollar. Wow. Yes. So we could Every have a, year. Yes. Yeah. We could have Every a PT year. company yeah. local, yeah. Yeah. and then you could work for that PT local company. Once again, there's, there's ways around it, or there's, there's, there's ways to do it, yeah. but, uh, but if you're not sure, um, you can end up getting yourself pretty on start. It's the yeah. frustration ways. <laughs> you, you gave the beautiful example of America, Australia. It's simple, straightforward. Here, yeah. there's a various stepping stones around it. Yeah. And they're here to protect the, the market, the, the, the working market over here from people just moving in and, yes. and taking over. I think that's the same for anyone from <clears throat> Southeast Asia as well. They just can't come to Bali and start working, can they? Um, Asians have a different regulation yeah, coming correct. in, yes. Yeah. Just make it hard for us. <laughs> <laughs> Just us, us cute ones. <laughs> I want to become a taxi driver and get all that money. Oh, yeah. You know, the taxi, you know. Yeah. I won't have a meter. Yeah. No, no, I don't, no, don't. no, 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 meter. No meter, no, sorry. Broken, broken. <laughs> Just fly a blue car and pretend it's a blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a yellow car, but it's blue. Can't oh, no, you see? Oh, no, the new one, I don't know if you saw the video, but I'm just going to buy a tuk-tuk. Start building oh, them. I'll take people to the opposite side of Bali yeah. for five bucks and charge them two hundred dollars to bring them back. 
Oh, that was oh what's that? Man, I've got to oh, say, yeah. if you think there's scams over here, don't go to Bangkok. <laughs> oh, they are good at it. They are experts at it. We're fun, but it was uh, it was well worth the vlog. Let me say. <laughs> um, All right. Well, thanks. so thanks a lot. That's been interesting. Um, I think I'd really like to talk about what it takes to do a working in Bali um, deal next year, next week. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we can go through the different working steps. Working key tests. Yeah, to get a working yeah, key yeah, test yeah, to get permission yeah. to come over here, get a job. There's different types of skills that you can bring to the table and different technical or, or um, uh, academic qualifications that can give you yep. the authority to be here as well. Yep. Um, but they're a little bit harder. The criteria and, and, the, and the benchmarks mm -hmm. are really high. So. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. All and right. uh, we're going to get Frank with Frank next week. <laughs> and if, and Frank, if Frank hasn't been sacked or uh, <laughs> been moved on, uh, you know, he'll yeah. be here. No worries. All right. Awesome. Take care, guys. Cheers, guys. There you go. Cheers.